For those of you who don't know me, I work as the Women's Ministry Facilitator for the Prezi Church in New South Wales. 2020 has been a big year for me and for our family, as I'm sure it has been for all of you as well. And for us, there were some additional challenges at the start of this year. You see, at the end of 2019 and during the beginning of this year, we found that my eight-year-old son has ADHD and dyslexia and that my 12-year-old daughter was also diagnosed with ADHD as well. We'd moved house in December last year and so my son was starting a new school and I was feeling really worried that he wouldn't get the same level of support that he'd had before. So as this year began, I really felt quite overwhelmed and burdened. How are we going to navigate these needs of our kids that we'd only just found out about? And even the thought of having two kids with ADHD, although it was validating of our experience, our house is pretty rowdy sometimes, it felt like a burden. It felt tiring and exhausting. But little did I know what was coming. In mid-February, I went for a skin check and a few days later, the doctor rang to tell me that I had a stage two deep melanoma. This meant that there was a risk of it having spread to my lymph system and throughout my body. It was a massive shock. The next month was really hard, going to appointments and having scans done. And I had a surgery, which a decent chunk was taken out of my back and two lymph nodes were removed for a biopsy. There was a lot of waiting and uncertainty about the future and every day just felt really hard. In mid-March, we got the really good news that the melanoma hadn't spread. So I still need to get regular skin checks, but for me, the risk went down at that point and I was really thankful. But it had been a really challenging, exhausting month and we'd hardly had time to come up for air when one week later, I was sitting next to my son, bewildered and dazed, sitting on the couch in the room that would become his homeschool classroom for the next however many weeks. I just lost count. Previously, I'd felt really worried about whether he was gonna get enough support at school. We just found a dyslexia tutor for him, but now all that was gone. And here we were by ourselves at home. I just remember feeling shell-shocked that first day. My three kids were home, my two daughters were in the kitchen making a mess, and I just felt irritated. They were in my space on a weekday. It was just surreal. And then I thought to myself, I don't want this lockdown season for however long it's gonna go for, to be one that my children look back on and remember their mum just being irritated and cranky and no fun to be around. And so I prayed that first day, Lord, please help me to be calm and kind with my family. Well, it was exhausting. I was working in my Prezi job as well as another job I've got as a counsellor where I do work with couples and families and individuals. And so I just aimed to go one day at a time. Every day, I just prayed for the strength to get through, to have wisdom and energy for my work and to be calm and kind with my kids. And God was actually really good in answering those prayers. There was a few Bible verses that were actually really helpful to me during that time. You see, during that month of waiting um, after that melanoma diagnosis, I wasn't sure whether I might die or whether I'd need treatment or how sick I might get. And my husband shared with me from Luke 21. And in that chapter, Jesus talks to his disciples about all the difficult things that they're going to face. He tells them they'll be arrested and persecuted. They'll be put into prison, betrayed and hated. And then Jesus says this extraordinary thing in verse 18. He says, But not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. You see, no matter what challenges and difficulties and horrible things may happen, Jesus promises us eternal safety. No matter what sickness happens to us, he is able to protect and keep us whole, complete and unharmed to take us into heaven. And I was really challenged. Was that promise of Jesus enough for me? I'd always assumed that my life would look a certain way. I wanted it to look a certain way. But did I really believe that my eternal safety was the most important thing and the surest hope that I could ever have? I'd felt so burdened about having to help my son to learn how to read and write. I felt it was all down to me to help him learn to cope and function in the world. And I got really anxious. What happens if he couldn't cope? Maybe he couldn't get a job. 
And then I was facing the prospect that I might not even be around or I might be too sick to help him. And I felt God putting his finger on this deep fear. And it actually was really helpful, but it was very painful as well. Because I needed to trust that God is enough, that he's my loving Heavenly Father who is strong and kind. And he's also the loving Heavenly Father of my children and my husband. God is trustworthy and he would ensure that my kids and husband were eternally safe too. Another verse that really helped me during the COVID lockdown was John 15, where Jesus says, Remain in me, and I also will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. You see, during lockdown, I had these times when I just felt really useless. I was struggling to feel productive. I was trying to do homeschooling with my son and trying to work. And sometimes I just felt fairly useless. I wanted to be useful, but I felt pretty helpless. I thought of the doctors and the nurses on the front line. I thought, here I am, I'm just at home with my kids. So John 15 was what I needed to hear. It reminded me about what it means to be fruitful. And it taught me how I could bear fruit at a time when I felt weak and exhausted. I'm fruitful when I remain in Jesus. When I cling to him, Jesus will bear fruit in me and my life. And that time didn't have to be a waste. This season has been really humbling for me and I find myself just trying to stay in the moment more and be present in what I'm doing and just enjoying really simple things like the sun and going for walks. So in finishing, I just want to share one last part of the Bible. Romans 5 has been a great encouragement to me. It says this, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And not only that, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope. And this hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who he's given us. We have a hope both now and in the future, that will never let us down and it will never disappoint. And I can praise God for that.